Hello, this is Skelligun. Welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking about the 1980 Italian supernatural horror film Inferno, written and directed by Dario Argento. Uh, it stars a bunch of people I don't recognize. Um, so, as in the and to do the same f format as I had last time, I'm going to tell you first what I expect. Well, I already told you what the movie I'm going to be seeing is, so I've already covered that base. The next phase I'm going to talk about is what I expect of the movie. And then after that, I'm going to watch the movie because I haven't seen this movie before. I actually haven't seen it ever, so this will be a completely new experience for me. Unlike my previous movie, Lawnmower Man, which I hadn't seen since I was about um, eight or, yeah, probably around eight. Okay, so anyways, getting to the movie, um, so this is a Dario Argento film. The plot on the back of the box describes it as a young woman stumbles upon a mysterious diary that reveals the secrets of the three mothers and unleashes a nightmare world of demonic evil. As the unstoppable evil spreads from Rome to New York City, this unholy trinity must be stopped before the world is submerged in the blood of the innocent. Uh, that sounds pretty awesome, but let's keep in mind here that I'm assuming because this is a 1980s Dario Argento Italian horror film, the budget is probably not there for a um, demonic epic. What I'm assuming is we're probably going to get a bunch of scenes where the protagonist sees something that's not usual, Sees maybe he sees a dead body, or he or she, um, whoever the protagonist in this movie is, sees a dead body and looks at it and is just kind of like, huh, that's weird, and then like the camera lingers on it while some really good music plays, the shot's probably really well set up, but it's not really scary. Um, that's kind of what I've grown to expect from Italian movies, Italian horror movies, is that they usually have good cinematography. They usually have incoherent plots, and they're usually excessively gory, and usually have a lot of nudity and sex in them. So, and also because this is a 1980s Dario Argento film, I'm going to assume that there's going to be... I'm also assuming that there's going to be a lot of, like, really fake-looking blood, because that's another thing I've noticed, that the blood never looks realistic. Um, so yeah, there's probably going to be... Uh, satanic symbolism, there's probably going to be some really melted crayon looking blood, there's probably going to be a lot of cameras lingering on really well shot scenes that aren't scary, I'm expecting surrealism, um, I read a little bit prior to buying this movie, the, I basically only read the introductory paragraph to this movie on Wikipedia, based on that, it made the movie sound very much like a combination of Dreams in the Witch's House, or I believe that was the title of the H.P. Lovecraft story, and the Lucio, Lucio Fulci movie, uh, The Beyond. And The Beyond was a film that I, I, I have seen before. Maybe if I saw a better print of it, and maybe if I saw it now, I would have different opinions on it. I did see it when I was a little bit younger, maybe about 10 years ago, when I was like 18. Um, also I saw a really bad print of it, it was also probably edited, it was when one of those really cheap DVD packs that you could buy, or had like a zillion movies that you would get at like Walmart for like $4, um, I didn't like that movie, I thought it was incompetent and surreal in a bad way, not in a good way, in that like, there was a lot of plot holes, and there was, it just like, it felt like, it's hard to describe Italian cinema to someone who's never seen it, but basically everything tends to feel very sluggish and nothing makes sense, and you get this feeling that it's not important, that it doesn't make sense, if that makes sense. It, you tend to get a sense that these movies have a lot of style over substance, but then it's also hampered by the fact that the budget is never there, so that the style is usually limited to the camera work and the scene setting up and the music, which is always impeccable, but it's always really kind of stymied by really bad special effects. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how this movie plays out, because from what I understand, this movie did not do well when it came out, as uh, at the time it came out, it was not very well received, but from what I understand, also, it has gone on to gain a very cult 
following and people regard it as one of his best one of his best works now it says where at the time it was kind of looked down upon so that'll be interesting to see and for the record also i'm going to be watching this as part of the blue underground blu-ray uh three disc set which also includes cat nine tails and deep red uh, both are movies those other two movies i haven't seen either before i'm actually hate to say it i'm very poorly versed in argento i actually know i've seen more of his daughter's um acting work than his filmography but anyways uh yeah so let's get into it and i will see you on the other side hey it's your boy again just finished watching the movie um inferno so uh let's start off by saying um this movie did match in many ways what i expected um i expected a lot of surrealism i expected characters underreacting to things i expected lots of kind of well in uh yeah, I expected a lot of bad fake blood, and I got it. I got a ton of fake blood that looked like melted crayons. I got surrealism out the wazoo. I got a main character who displayed zero emotion. And let me uh, focus first on that by saying that the acting in this movie is all over the place. Um, some of the characters overreact or overact and some of the characters just don't act which is kind of to be expected i've noticed that is a re well it's a common theme in basically all cinema uh, all like low budget r cinema if you will um it's especially true i've noticed though in euro films though part of that could be due to the dubbing which doesn't help uh dubbing is almost universally terrible um and i didn't want to watch this in the original language because i actually don't know if this uh let me just take a look here oh yeah it actually does have subtitles but okay i because i i thought i read a review on amazon where they said this version didn't have subtitles but anyway so the acting was bad Okay, let's just say that, and as I mentioned, the gore and crayon blood was bad, but that's kind of the worst of it. I mean, that was, everything else about this movie was really nice. I really liked it. Um, oh, heads up, one scene, um, for those of you who are sensitive to animal stuff bad things happening to animals there is a scene where um a guy kills a bunch of cats now in the context of the scene the cats are demonic witch cats that possibly eat human flesh but still you know and the guy immediately gets killed afterwards because you know this is a horror movie and anyways so on the subject of the surrealism aspect, um, it's been my past experience that a lot of Italian horror films have surrealism as like a common thing. Like I mentioned Lucio Fulci's uh, The Beyond, um, the Mario Bava's Demons movies also had a lot of kind of like moments where you're like, it didn't really jive what was going on. Um, usually this is to a negative effect, I found, I find that it's just kind of like, it's weirdness for the sake of being weird, it's like plot holes for the sake of, like, shock value in a way. In this movie's case, the, the surrealism actually helped the film. Um, the big thing about this movie, or sort of the biggest theme I would say is that the, is the house that, or the building that this movie takes primarily takes place and see and a little bit of the plot summary here is um this young woman is reading this book called the three mothers which mentions that the house uh, actually mentions that the house she's living in is was constructed by the, um an alchemist 
as one of the three houses to house these three mothers who are these dark, dark witches who are evil and secretly control the world or something. And it's mentioned that there is one house in Germany, one house in Italy, and one house in New York. And this is uh, takes place in the house in New York. And from what I understand, that this is actually a film trilogy. This is the second part of the trilogy. The first one, I believe, is Suspiria. And I don't remember the title of the third movie. Anyways, after watching this, I definitely want to go and check those out. So, yeah, we'll go and see about that afterwards. But anyway, so she's investigating this house that she's living in that was built it by this alchemist to house a demon of some kind. And yeah, so this house, it is bonkers, let me tell you. It's got this kind of weird 70s vibe. It's very black and red. Parts of the building look modern and have like these drapes everywhere other parts of the building are like collapsing and falling apart with like rebar and parts of the ceiling falling out parts of the building have like this just like everything is glowing red other parts are like pitch black and blue it's a very surreal building and most of the movie takes place in the building and it's just very unsettling watching it you kind of get sucked into this building that it's just it doesn't make sense you like normally when you watch a movie you kind of get this set in one part set in a if you watch a movie set in one building or where most of the action at least takes place in one building you kind of get a sense of over time you kind of build up the layout of the building even if you base you can fill in the cracks basically on knowledge having seen a how most buildings are set up in your life. You know in an apartment building, there's usually like a hallway with a bunch of apartments on each side. Usually it's just linear hallways. This building makes zero sense. And it's... It kind of... It makes you feel uneasy when you're watching it, I gotta say. You're kind of like, what is going on here in some of these rooms? Yeah, it's... And the main character is the ends up being the woman I mentioned earlier's brother who comes to investigate her disappearance and this is following uh, the death of one of his friends from his college or maybe it's his girlfriend no, it's kind of unclear which he like walks in and finds her like stabbed to death and he just kind of is just like whatever and he's like hey that's kind of weird maybe I should check on my sister cuz and so like even though he just like is the only witness to a murder, um, I guess he's given clearance to go back to America, because, I don't know, um, plot reasons. Anyway, so he goes back to America and goes to New York to investigate his, you know, sister's disappearance, and he meets the strange inhabitants of this building in this local area, and, of course, one by one, they kind of start getting killed off, and... He just kind of bumbles his way through this bizarre building that's slowly falling apart. It's a very strange movie, and I know this, like, it doesn't really sound like I'm giving it much credit, but I gotta say, the set designs are amazing. And also, I gotta tell you, the. While the blood and gore effects aren't the best, some of the scenes towards the end actually are pretty spooky another thing of note is the music to this movie which i believe you may actually be able to hear the main menu music um faintly in the background which italian movies tend to have really great soundtracks now this movie's soundtrack is good it's not the best i've ever heard um but it is bonkers it is just off the wall and it is nuts the music in this movie it's some of it's just like, where did they find this stuff? And there we go. I just turned the background music off because it was getting a little annoying. But anyways, um, so yeah, Inferno, it is a... I would recommend it. I'd give it two skulls. I'm not going to tell you out of what. Because I haven't figured that part out yet. But I really liked it. Um, if you don't mind uh, some scenes where there's, you know, simulated cat death um i would say you should watch it 
if you like movies about evil architecture, which, by the way, that's a theme I also enjoy. Surprisingly few movies deal with it, but I think it's really entertaining. The like, only other example that really springs to mind is like Ghostbusters, which is kind of funny. Um, both are about evil buildings in New York built by alchemists like in like the turn of the century. But that's kind of a weird parallel if you think about it. This movie in Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is a good movie. Anyways, shame the sequel and the remake were garbage. But yeah, so if you like um, evil architecture, if you like crazy 1980s Italian music, uh, watch it. If you like movies where... If you like movies where the set is the most interesting character, I would recommend this movie. I also just want to add a quick little note in here. I noticed as of editing that um, during the first segment of this review, there's a lot of crinkling in the background. That was me opening the Blu-ray case. I didn't realize that my mic could pick that up, so next time I do one of these, which should hopefully be... Uh, this coming weekend, uh, hopefully, uh, like I'd like to do this once a week. But yeah, so the next time I do this, I will definitely uh, make sure to not have that sound in the background again. And also, I'm going to make sure the DVD player is off before I start recording afterwards so you don't have to deal with repetitive uh, background music next time. I'm not sure what the project will be next one. Um, we'll see. Um, I might not do a movie every week. If I don't do a movie, I might do a book or something. Who knows? And that's about all. Peace out.